Okay, so we're going to go through question one in free undamped vibrations. We've got a system consisting of a mass with two identical springs, each with spring constant k, initially sitting at their unstretched position. At k equilibrium. We're asked to find an expression of the natural angular frequency and to find the maximum amplitude of vibration of the system with given initial conditions. So first of all, we have to find an equation of motion of the system. And we do that by doing a free body diagram of the system in a perturbed position. So that is, we're going to move the system slightly in order to create an equation of how it would react to being moved off of its equilibrium. So we've got our mass here. And let's say this is the initial position. So it has been moved a distance x from the initial position. The forces on this system are going to be the force of gravity, the normal force. We assume it's sitting on a frictionless surface, so there's no friction. But because it's been moved x from this initial unstretched length of the spring position, now the springs are stretched. They're stretched such that they're going to try and pull the system back towards equilibrium. So we've got two spring forces, Fk. Now we write our Newton's second law equation, sum of forces in x. So minus Fk minus Fk equals Max equals Mx double dot. And we're going to put our acceleration in x in the positive x direction. We're just assigning it that way. That's going to help us work it out, get the right signs on all our terms. So we know that fk is going to be equal to the spring constant k times x. So we can write our equation of motion as minus 2 kx equals mx double dot. And then we'll write that into a standard form, moving all the terms to one side. We get mx double dot plus 2kx equals 0. We'll note that all the terms in this equation are positive, And that's good. That's what we want. If you find at this point you've got a negative term, you're going to have to go back to your uh, free body diagram and your equation of motion in order to figure out what's going on. So now we're going to write this in normal form. That is, we're going to divide the whole equation by whatever the coefficient is in front of the x double dot term. So we get x double dot plus 2k over mx equals 0. In free and damp uh, vibration, this is always of the form x double dot plus omega n squared, which is the angular natural frequency squared times x equals zero. So from these two equations, we can see that omega n squared is 2k over m, and omega n is then the square root of 2k over m. That's a bit different from what we initially determined with a single spring. That's because we do have two springs. And we could write k equivalent, in this case, if we were to replace those two springs with one spring, that would have to have a spring constant of 2k, which would give us, again, our omega n equals square root of k equivalent over m which is what we're used to seeing. So we found an expression for the angular natural frequency. That was part one. Now we need to find the maximum amplitude of vibration of the system. So we know 
this differential equation as a solution of the form x of t. So the displacement at any time equals c sine omega n t plus phi. And c is our amplitude. We've got an expression for that. C equals V naught squared. That is the initial velocity given to the system divided by omega n squared, or the square of the angular natural frequency, plus x naught squared. So that's the initial displacement of the system, square root. And we can substitute in our value or our expression for omega n squared we get v naught squared m over 2k plus x naught squared to 1 half is our expression for amplitude. We can plug in numbers for that. We get 0 0.3 meters per second, all squared. That's the initial velocity we're given, times 10 kilograms, divided by 2 times 200 meters per meter, plus 0 0.1 meters squared, square root of the whole expression, and we get a value of c equals 0 0.1107 meters. Now, if we want to check this, we note that this is greater than x naught, and that makes sense because we not only have an initial displacement, but we're giving it an initial velocity as well which indicates that it's going to be moving beyond that initial displacement. So that's good. If we just draw this out, we're going to see this is the value of C for x of t, and this is the value x naught.